bunch of <laughs> Thank you. Let's go hang out over here. Set. 
down here. And Lucy, how's it going up there? It is going so good. We are very ready. Very ready. All right, folks, let's give that countdown for three. Three, three two, two, one. All right. Wow. Awesome job. And great job, Evan. Thank you so much. Let's give her another round of applause to help us out this morning. Yes. I'll take that. Thank I was you. I was a little bit nervous for the front row there for a second, but that was awesome. And Daisy, you did such a good job out here too today, lady. That was very fancy flying. We have a lot of your friends to meet though. I hope. Yep. See you later. That was Daisy, the trumpeter of Hornville. All right. Oh my gosh, they're pretty smart little birds too. Super smart. Yes, but okay. If you want to go to the top of the intelligence scale in the bird world, it's the Corbin family: your crows, ravens, jays, including this little pipe crow. Yeah, and truly the Pied Crow, amazing little birdie. Uh, but to show those smarts off to all of you a little bit closer, we need the help of another volunteer. And uh, this time we need uh, the help of an adult with a dollar bill. Yes. Yeah, look at the hands switch around here, Lucy. Uh, how about with the awesome parks, oh no, you're a wilderness explorer right here in the sunglasses. Yes, I love the hat. Uh, you wanna, if you wanna help us, all you gotta do is pull that money out. And uh, does it, it doesn't matter if it's a five or a 10 or anything. Yeah, it's no big deal because it's not about the amount of money that it is. It's like what it represents to our friend over here, truly. It's like a little flag. So if you stand up right where you're at, you cool with the bird landing on you. Yeah, that's the idea. We want people to get really close looks at all these birds. And to show off the smarts, he knows where to go. When you put your arm out like so, it's like a little flag for truly. He'll know exactly where to land. Cool thing, we can bring this anywhere in the parks, right? That way they know exactly where to go. Every time when they see that dollar, you get a close look. And it's it's also, yeah, shamelessly a great opportunity for me <laughs> to collect lunch money. Yes. And uh, twenty dollars. Wow. Yeah. Thanks. Have a magical day. For sure. Wow. That's, yeah, that's really nice. Maybe we need more practice. Of, of course, more practice. Uh, does anybody have fifty dollars over here? Who <laughs> wants to see? Yeah, play it around. <laughs> We're just messing around, and hopefully, truly, we'll bring this back to you if you're cool with it. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know, 20 bucks. All you have to do is stand up right where you're at again, put your arm out like you did before. Whenever it lands in that arm, same hand, wrap your fingertips around it so it doesn't blow away. All right, truly, we had our fun. Our friend is there waiting. Perfect, right out to the arm. And wrap those fingertips. Yeah, we got there, all right. Thank you so much. And truly, you truly are amazing. Money back at a theme park? <laughs> that too? Yeah. Whoa. Oh my goodness. I know. Okay, so we also have these macaws yeah. flying around. Um, fun fact, they don't work here. <laughs> They're part of our sister show, Wayne Recounters. Very cool show. But, okay, let's meet a bird who does work here. Do y'all want to meet an owl? Oh, yeah. That's yeah, awesome. okay. It's a really good photo opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. It's slow motion. It's, it's a great setting. What are we looking for? Wait. Those are chickens. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> and that one just moved. Um, Probably because the owl is so yeah. You all know what the Circle of Life is? Yeah, and if you don't, you go check it out at the Lion King. Give me just a couple of seconds, get this sorted out, and we'll fly the owl, Lucy! I'm sure they're fine if they, okay. Um, the chicken should be fine with Adam. Let's keep going. Awesome. We're gonna be an owl. Here he comes. This is Quaddy. Quaddy is a milky eagle owl. That is one of the largest owl species in the world, and his next flight is gonna take him the whole way across the middle of the theater. So They just fly lower. <laughs> As you flew past, though, you probably didn't really hear anything, right? Because owls have an amazing adaptation for nearly silent flight, which is important because they're ambush predators. They want to sneak up on their prey. So when they're out hunting, they sit up high in a tree. That camouflage coloration helps them blend right in. They disappear, and they sit and wait for a mouse to come running past. They swoop down silently, and that mouse or animal never even knew there was a mouse that would come up on a tree. They are phenomenal hunters, and Quetty, you did a great job. That is Quetty, the Milky Eagle Owl. Okay. All right, I got all the chickens sorted out. So we're ready for the owl. Did I just miss the whole owl? 
Yeah? I mean, you almost caught the tail end. Did you just tell them jokes or did you give them any no. good facts about owls? Okay, no, that's what we were talking about, how beneficial okay. they are. Okay, I have one more fact. An owl that size could catch over a thousand mice in a single year. Yeah, it's incredible. And it hops too. Around these parts, we had a terrible rat problem with where we had the owls. We're not supposed to talk about that. Why? Uh, what do we do? No, 
be there. Well, but Jeff is in the back. He's the sound tech that helps us out. What do we what do? We do? The backup, yeah, that's a good point. Hey, where are you going? Because Corey can bring it out. It's just a court. Lucy, there's... It's a two-person show. Well, um, the shoelace thing was pretty cool, right? Yeah. As long as you guys are on my side, because that's, that's my boss. So. <laughs> See what she thinks about it after the show. Uh, well... We already talked about the cause and that they don't work here, but we work with some parents. Do you all want to meet like a talking parent? Does that sound cool? Okay. All right, one second. Um, hey, Josh. Josh. Josh, you're there. Okay, hey. Do you think maybe we can do keto now? Please. Pretty please. Cherry on top? Okay, all right. Thank you. I appreciate your help. Um, okay, so we're going to meet keto, and keto is an awesome representation of of the idea of a talking parrot. And the idea behind that is mimicry. I hope you, you know that one. And if you don't, mimicry is just the ability to copy sounds that you hear in your environment. It's something that's very common in the animal kingdom. Humans are great at it. Uh, the raven is a great example. That bird can say hi and hello. It's a little creepy. But yeah, mimicry, it's, it's all over the animal kingdom. But when I think of some of the best representations of that, it's, it's the Amazon parrots, or what has been kind of nicknamed the, the talking parrots. There's a couple different species. Thank you, Josh, for your help, buddy. Oh, yeah, that's a fun little trick over there. You might see a bird over there. Uh, okay, let's hear what Keto's got to say about things. Let's start off with that greeting. You want to give him a great big greeting? Hello. Yes, it's a, it's a little greeting. We like to be funny. Yeah, um, she can actually introduce herself, though. Uh, Keto, she's a... Yellow-headed Amazon. Yes, a double yellow-headed Amazon parrot. Yeah, believe it or not. It is a mouthful, but she can do it. Uh, She's actually been around people for quite a while, and living it here in the park, too, as well. She's picked up on some of the animal noises that are around here. Yes, look at those dancers. She's ready. Uh, just around the corner at Maharaja Jungle Trek, you might have seen the big scary tigers. Yeah, they are terrifying, that's for sure. And uh, if that's too much for you, don't worry. She knows something uh, a little smaller. How about the kitty cat? Yeah, this little kitty cat. It's so cute. <laughs> um, well, Keto's kind of stepped it up an option in my, in my book because she's learned a whole song about animals, and maybe if we're lucky, she'll sing that for us today. What do you think, Keto? You want to sing? Josh the human, everyone. Yes, we appreciate you so much. 
All right, keto's pretty cool, right? Yeah, it's an awesome bird to work with. Uh, this is an important point, though. Is it as awesome as that bird looks? Just remember that that bird is one in a million. Try to find a parrot like that in the pet shop, good luck. They're, they don't exist out there. And there are some really major, hey, you're back. Hi, can you all hear me? Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Uh, yeah, I got the background. I heard keto, right? I did hear keto. That was a good idea. Yeah, she did a great job singing. Uh, I was just telling the folks, this one is kind of important to all of us who work with these animals. Yeah. As awesome as that bird is, like I said, one in a million, it's a really big commitment to bring them into your house as a pet. And that's what we want you all to think about. Yeah, it, it is a good point. And I don't know if I'd have mentioned this, but like most parents are not going to do what keto does, right? Instead, what they're going to do is scream all day long. You hear these no calls flying around. Little parents do that too. They also bite really hard. And talk about a commitment. Small parents can live to be 50 or 60 years old. These bigger macaws, upwards of 70 or 80 years. That's a lifetime of work. 100%. And if you didn't notice, they were cutting down some grass, but they were literally taking chunks of concrete out of the wall. Yes. So, like Lucy said, imagine that's here. Okay, we're moving on. Yes. I like it. Okay. Um, right. yeah, I thought it would be cool, a little bit of contrast. From a small bird to one of our biggest. This is Natasha, and she is a marabou stork. That's one of the largest flighted birds in the world. She has about a seven foot wingspan, but her big brothers are about 11 feet wingtip to wingtip. Yeah, they are awesome to see in flight. And over in Africa, where they're native to, they serve a really important role out in the wild. Yeah because they're carrion eaters, right? So they clean up the dead stuff that's out there and it stops the spread of disease too. It's the number one reason why we like to call them nature's recyclers. Yeah, and you know what? If we all did a little bit more recycling in our own way, this earth would be a much cleaner place. She's out of here. That was Natasha, the mayor of the store. She's like a teacup marabou store. She's yes. so cute. She is so cute. We, we love having her here. Great bird. And it's cool to talk about how beneficial they are. But really, every bird you see here today has their own job out there, including our next bird, who's flying right over here. This bird helps control insect populations. It's called a brown crane. And his name is Fraser. It's Fraser Crane. Cheers. Do you want to fly him down? You're going to do it still? No, 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 he hasn't been flying down yet. I know, but I saw the training board. No, that today fly down. you have to do it. We were going to do it for the first time. No, we've been, we've changed it. We're only doing backstage stuff because he refuses to fly. Well, well, today's a new day, and this has been a really supportive group. What do you all think? Should Lucy give it a try? Come on, come on. Any treats? Is that what it is? I have extra stuff. Okay, all right. Well, this is where we'll fly him, right? You know that part. And it's just the relationship with Frazier. A couple of different grades that Lucy's great with, but Fraser in particular, we've been working on that. Okay. That is how it's been going. All right, all right, but hang on, hang on. We, we got another shot. He's right there on the platform. He's not that far away. And uh, he wasn't looking, right? Yeah, I know. It's, it's the, what you know already. But the team and I, we noticed this and we thought it'd be great to get you a present. It should help out. It'll make sense in a second. It's behind the rock. Yeah, it'll, it'll, make sec it'll make sense because the idea behind this is that crown crates, they get that name because of the feathers, right? So, we thought we'd just make Lucy her own crown of golden feathers. Yeah. What is this? Well, it's a crown. No way. Yeah, no, your I'm head. Not, no, I'm not going to put it on your head. No, I'm not. I know, it's, it's a little redundant, but... What do you all think? Should she give it a try? Yeah. Come on. Come on. Oh, you guys. Okay. Yeah, this feels really good. Yeah. yeah. Woo! They get it? Yes. Yeah. I mean, there's no way that that bird can miss you now, right? Yeah, so they just look up and fly on right now. It's science. Science? Yeah. Yeah, give it a go. Hang on. Here we go. Here we go.
now the real reason, and that's Justin Timberlake from 2003. <laughs> nice. That's a vibe. It's, it's something, all right, yeah, you can go ahead and take that off. Because that's, that's not really how we train the animals that we work with. Kind of gives you an idea of what we're willing to do to build the relationships with our friends and coworkers. Thanks again, Lucy. And building the relationship with all of you. This is the whole reason why we get to come up here and do this crazy bird show every day. And we love to tell people that there is still so much we all can do every single day to help out wildlife. Absolutely, and I can't think of a better example of some of the positive impact we've had than the story of the national symbol of the United States of America, the bald eagle. Everyone, this is Hope. Now, Hope was injured out in the wild and later deemed non-releasable, so she lives here with us. We get to tell the amazing story of the bald eagle. Some of you may actually remember that not too long ago, their populations were declining. Their numbers were dropping so low so quickly. Bald eagles were placed on the endangered species list. People thought future generations might not get a chance to see these birds out in the wild. But then people took notice and they started taking action. They cleaned up waterways where bald eagles fish and they stopped using a chemical pesticide called DDT, which played a big role in their decline. Yeah, and it was people like all of us here today in the conservation efforts throughout North America that saved the bald eagle from the brink of extinction. And everyone's efforts paid off. Their population numbers began to rise, so much so that the bald eagle was officially taken off the endangered species list. It is a great conservation success story because it shows the power we all have to protect wildlife. Yeah, if we did it for the bald eagle, there's still so many different animals that need our help out there. One in particular is the blue fur macaw. This right here, this is Ringo. This is one of the rarest macaw species. They're only found in Bolivia, and unfortunately right now there are fewer than 400 of them left in the wild. And that's a really low number, but it's not all bad news, because we've joined up with an incredible organization called the World Parent Trust in hopes to help reintroduce and repopulate blue throat macaws back into the flooded forest of Bolivia. So hopefully someday soon, we can see skies filled with blue throat macaws. Which would be an amazing sight to see. And you know what? It doesn't end there. There are so many birds out there who all have their own unique stories. Like this bird, what kind of bird is this? A toucan. His name is Bruno, so we don't talk about him. No, no. <laughs> Or the knocked hornbill over here in the tree. It doesn't matter what animal it is, though. Just go outside and create new connections with wildlife. From all of us here and all of our different friends, we'd like to leave you with one final wish. May your hearts take flight, and your spirits soar forever. Namaste. Thank you all for coming to Feather Friends in Flight, and enjoy the rest of your day here at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Bye bye. Bye, everyone.